Horizontal Boring is some of the newest technology out in putting in utility construction. It is one of the neatest tools that we've ever had since boring started. Most people have no idea how much danger is involved when you are excavating in the ground. Believe it or not, this is a typical metro right-of-way once you get it located for doing utility construction. Most people don't understand how hard it is to get a horizontal boring machine to do what it needs to do to get the job done with no casualties and no accidents and no problems with the infrastructure that's already in the ground. The most critical thing you can do is make sure that you got your area located. Make sure that you know exactly how deep these utilities are before you start trying to steer around them. At Mid-American, we've seen an increase in damages from horizontal directional drilling uh, related to our facilities. There's been a significant increase over the last few years and more alarming, we found um, that usually those damages you know, result in significant property damage, either because the gas migrates underground and it causes some type of rupture or explosion, or the facilities themselves are damaged to the extent that they have to be replaced and have extensive outages for customers. There are a few key points prior to doing any type of excavation, whether it's with standard equipment or with a horizontal directional drill. First is following proper procedures. Second, applying on-site due diligence. And third, taking all practical and necessary steps to avoid hitting the stuff that's under the ground, whether it's a pipeline, a fiber optic cable, or an electric line. And always remember, when exposing facilities, you'll want to dig all the way down to the depth of your planned excavation. It's very possible the first line you come across may not be the actual facility you are trying to verify. You could come across an abandoned and or retired facility, private facilities, or only one phase of a multi-phase facility. Identifying the presence of underground facilities is very simple. All you have to do is call your uh, one call number in the state of Iowa, it's the Iowa One Call or 811. And the utilities who own those um, things that are under the ground will come out and, and mark those facilities using paint or flagging that will help you get an initial indication of where those facilities might be. Remember, the locates are just an initial indication of where an underground facility might be. So it's very important that you take the time to pothole using hand digging methods or other safe equipment such as a hydrovac to make sure you identify actually where those facilities are located and more importantly the depth of those facilities. The depth of an underground pipeline or electric cable or anything else can change gradually or dramatically in just a few feet. So it's very important that you take the time to walk your path that you plan to drill, use safe mechanisms in order to expose the pipeline, record the depth, and do all things that you possibly can to make sure you avoid those facilities. So directional boring, you gotta be careful because you're, you're coming out to a job site, you have, you have visuals of the locates that are there, but you also have to visualize the other stuff that's, that might not be located. Um, take a look and see if there's, you know, an electric transformer, a phone pad, um, maybe a visual that, that something hasn't been located. And also check the status on your ticket and make sure that it has been located, that the locator has been out there, that he has had access to do his locates. And if you think that something hasn't been located, call in a no response or try and get a hold of the locator or one of his supervisors just to make sure that everything has been completed on the ticket. So when we get on the job site, we always expose everything uh, and we make sure that we find it. We always visually see everything that we expose. Don't always assume that their marks are going to be on. Uh, most of the time they are. Uh, sometimes they're not and that's not always their fault. Um, but always dig to expose um, the utility, find it. Uh, going under utilities underneath concrete, we always core drill and, and vacuum. There's, there's no blind boring in what we do. Uh, that keeps that keeps our guys safe and it keeps everybody else safe too. So core drilling is a process of basically taking a drill and a concrete bit and you drill through the concrete, asphalt, brick, whatever. Uh, pull the core out, you bring a pothole machine in which uses water and then it's like a big vacuum. You break the mud up, you suck it out of there, uh, you verify what the depth is of your utility and you either go above or below it. There's a lot of times that we cross utilities that are in a street. Core drilling is the most important way to get to that utility to find what depth it is sitting at. We pothole so we don't hit other utilities. There are major gas lines underground, 
major three-phase and six-phase electric lines, and these are life-threatening, so you have to be very, very careful when you are digging around these utilities. As you're potholing your utilities, measure down to find the top of the pipe. Knowing that measurement is very, very important as you're boring along the right-of-way. If you are going to be under another utility, you want to give yourself at least two foot of room, if not more, just to make sure that on your pullback, you're not hitting the utility, whether you're using a reamer or a big product that you're trying to pull through. This is what we'd use to pull bigger product back. Uh, so we basically drill out, hook the reamer on, start pulling product back. Sometimes you might pre-ream it before you put the product back. Um, but when you put a reamer on, you always need to make sure that when you're pulling this thing back that you can still visually see the utilities that you've crossed. These things, for the most part, will follow your bore path, but there's always times where you might raise or lower and, and you might get into utility coming back. As you're boring through the ground, your locator who is tracking the bore head is communicating with your fellow worker that's back working on the bore rig, actually doing the drilling itself. That's one of the most important things is to have those two guys in complete communication so they know exactly where that bore head's going at all times. Your locator is actually the guy tracking uh, your head on the machine. With the tracking device, it actually tracks our housing, uh, which has the beacon inside of it, which feeds us all the information um, up to the locators. There are different types of soil out here that you have to drill into. Some of it's sand where you can't steer your bore rod. Sometimes if you get in that situation, you want to use a mini or a backhoe and open up that area so you can get the right excavation done for the direction that you're trying to put in your product. If you can't steer your bore head, all bets are off. When something does get hit, it's time wasted not only for our crew, but for also the people coming out to fix them. All it takes is to hit one gas service and an entire neighborhood um, is affected by that. Damaging a gas line can cause a wide range of problems. Uh, hitting an individual service just affects one particular customer. However, if you had a transmission line or other type of feeder line, it could affect thousands of customers. Typically, our transmission lines will run cross-country and will be the main feed to towns. However, that's not always the case. Some can be running through some residential areas or through some towns. Our lines in our neighborhoods will range everywhere from a quarter of an inch of pressure all the way up to uh, close to a thousand pounds pressure. If for whatever reason your equipment happens to strike a natural gas pipeline, a few things are very critical. One, any movement of the directional drill could cause a spark that can ignite gas, so please don't move your, your drill equipment. Everyone in the area should immediately evacuate and call 911 and notify the utility as well as the Iowa One call. Do not resume drilling activities until the area has been made safe and cleared of any hazards. This type of strike can ruin your company. It can take you down and you can never recover. Here's the reality that we're dealing with. It's very difficult to identify what's beneath your feet, especially when we're talking about utilities that have been around for 50, 60, sometimes 70 years. So the locates are not always going to be accurate. We have to do everything we can on the front end of the project to make sure that the drilling activity is completed safely. In particular, if you show up on site and utilities are clearly in conflict, you might just have to stop your work, go back to the drawing board, and come up with a different plan. Trust me, the time you spend on the front end redesigning the plan and coming up with a better solution to keep your employees safe will pay dividends on the back end as you don't have to deal with the consequences, which could be catastrophic for families or could be damaging to your business reputation and financially as well.